Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we're going to be talking about the life cycle of stars. So, I put down today's title, it's going to be the life cycle of a star. So, in this session, we're going to just talk about a life cycle of a small star. So, this one will be just for a small star, for example, those which are similar to the sun. So, if, for example, the sun. Yeah, I know you might think that's not a small star, but that is a small star compared to other ones. Okay, let's get to it, guys. Right, so we'll start off with the following. So a lot of people think that stars just appear out of nowhere and they're there forever, but no, stars actually have a whole life cycle. Just how, like, you have a tadpole that grows into a frog, there's a life cycle. Same thing for a star. There's a start and there's an end. So we'll start off with the following. So the first stage in which a star is formed is going to be... Okay, so this is how a star is formed. Right, imagine in space there's lots of dust and gas floating around. So there's lots of dust and gas. I'm going to draw loads of dots here. There we go. So there is a lot of dust plus gas just floating around in space, floating around in space. What type of gas is there? Well, the type of gas there's going to be is hydrogen. So just hydrogen. The first element in the periodic table. So there's lots of dust and gas floating around. This stage is called the nebula. So you've got to know all these key words for the GCSE. So N-E-B-U-L-A, this is the nebula. So dust and gas, it's floating around, and it's hydrogen, which is the gas there. Right, so this is the nebula stage. What will happen is the dust and gas will start to clump together. The reason why it will clump together is because gravity will drag all of it together. So let's draw it. And it starts to clump together in the center. There we go. So there's loads of it now in the center. Let's draw some arrows. So gravity is making it clump together. So gravity drags it all in. So let's put that down. So gravity. So gravity pulls the dust and hydrogen and gas together. It starts to clump up right now. So it starts to turn into a spherical body. So it starts, it starts to turn into a sphere. Here we go. And this stage is called a protostar. So this is called a protostar. Yeah. And now it becomes a protostar. So this stage is now become a protostar. I like to explain the word protostar. It's very similar to the word prototype. It's like the initial, the initial thing before it becomes a natural star. So it's a protostar right now. So once again from the top, we had a nebula. There we go. Then gravity starts to make it clump together. It then becomes a protostar. Here we go. So what happens at the protostar stage is, number one, we know that it will start to heat up. So it starts to heat up. It also becomes spherical, which means round. But there's not enough energy to produce light. So there's not enough energy for the star to shine. So it starts to clump up, but it's not hot enough for the star to shine. OK, so the next step is the following. So as it starts to heat up more and more, what happens is it enters its next stage in its life cycle. It enters the main sequence phase. So let's scroll down. Let's put another arrow because it's a flow chart. So we're going to go here. There we go. It's an arrow. So it then becomes an actual star. So, right. So now it's actually become an actual star. This stage is called the main sequence stage. So this is called a main sequence stage. Okay. The star will spend most of its life here. So let's put that down. So the couple properties for the main sequence stage. So Number one, the star will spend most of its life here. So it will spend most of its life in this stage. Number two, it's going to be... Number two, the star is hot enough for nuclear fusion to occur. So the star is now hot enough for nuclear fusion to occur. So think about it. What was there at the start? So right at the start, we know there was hydrogen gas. That hydrogen is now hot enough and there's enough pressure to fuse the hydrogen together. So the hydrogen gets fused together to become helium. So let's put that down. So... It's hydrogen is fused into helium. Okay, so at the main sequence stage, we know that number one, the star will spend most of its life there. Number two, the star is hot enough for nuclear fusion to occur. And number three, hydrogen is fused into helium. So think about it in the periodic table, we have hydrogen and then we have helium. So obviously, if I fuse the hydrogen, I then make helium. So all these things are happening. And obviously, we've got high temperature and high pressure. So we've got high temperature and pressure. Yeah, so we need high temperature and pressure for that to occur. Right, so obviously the star is shining. Let's put a couple of lines here. So the star is now shining. It's given off light over here. Next of all, it's going to be five. Another key point is going to be the star is most stable here. 
So it's the most stable right now. There's a reason why. It's because there's a balancing act between the forces. There are forces which are balanced here, which are keeping it in this position. So we know that gravity is pulling it all inwards, but we know that there must be a force pushing outwards to compensate, to balance it out. So where is that other force? So we can draw that here. So let's draw some arrows over here. There we go. So there's an outward force as well. Okay. So we have a balancing act here. The gravity that's pulling it inwards is being balanced out by a force pushing out. What is that force pushing out? That force is going to be the radiation pressure. So obviously when fusion takes place, yeah, when fusion is taking place, energy is created and therefore it's going to cause energy to be radiated outwards. So let's put that down. We know that the force of gravity pulling it inwards, those red lines, yeah, will be balanced out by that force from the outward radiation pressure. So there's outward radiation pressure at the same time balancing out the gravity. That's the reason why it's the most stable state. So there's quite a lot of information about the main sequence stage. Make sure that you remember all of it. Right, so from the top, we have number one, nebula, dust and gas, which is hydrogen gas. Then it clumps together, becomes a protostar, the first stage. So gravity is obviously what pulls it all together. And then it starts to heat up. Not hot enough uh, for fusion to occur yet. And, and nor is the star shining. It is spherical in shape though. Eventually it becomes hot enough to become the main sequence. Yeah? Easy stuff. Right, but obviously if I'm fusing hydrogen, I'm fusing hydrogen into helium. So I'm fusing the hydrogen into helium. Eventually I'm going to run out of the hydrogen. Think about it. I'm burning up all my hydrogen. Obviously I'm going to run out of it. So there's another stage now. This is when we start to run out of hydrogen. So if we start to run out of hydrogen, what happens is it will swell up to become a red giant. Let's put that down. So the next stage, going to put another arrow over here, it then swells up to become a red giant. So here we go, this is the red giant stage. There we go, so now it becomes a red giant. So now it's become a red giant. So in the red giant stage, what's happened is, so the star runs out of hydrogen and then begins to fuse helium. So it runs out of hydrogen inside it, and therefore we can fuse the helium which has now been made in the main sequence phase. So we run out of hydrogen and therefore we start to fuse helium. Okay, so we then start to make heavier elements compared to helium. So we can make, let's say for example, what was going to be made is we're going to make carbon, oxygen and nitrogen. So heavier elements in this case now. So obviously it's swell up right now. So now the star has swelled out to become a red giant. The star has obviously run out of hydrogen and now begins to fuse helium. And we can make heavier elements such as carbon, oxygen and nitrogen. So I'm fusing helium into these elements here. Okay, so right now from this stage, we know it's much larger than the main sequence phase right now. Maybe I'll color it in, maybe. Okay, so I've colored it in. Obviously, it's not the best diagram, but hopefully you get the idea. Obviously, it looks now like a red giant. But eventually, right now, what happens is, so eventually it will run out of the light elements to fuse together. So we can't fuse those light elements together. That won't occur anymore. So what happens is the core will collapse and the outer layer will shed off. So the core of this will collapse due to gravity and the outer layer will shed off. So what ends up being is, so I'll just draw that right now. So the next stage is going to be the, the outer layer shedding off. So as we run out of the light elements to fuse together, what happens is the outer layer sheds off. And what happens is the core collapses into a very hot, small white dwarf. So the core collapses to a very hot, small white dwarf. Right, and all you're left with is a white dwarf, guys. So you're left with a white dwarf afterwards. And the properties of the white dwarf are it's going to be hot, so hot, dense, and white. So that's obviously, that's why it's called a white dwarf. But eventually, it will lose its energy and it will cool down. Right, so eventually, it will become a black dwarf. And obviously, it will fade and it will become cold. So it's a long process, guys. Loads of keywords in here. So we're going to go through it from the top, right from the top. This is for a small star, guys. So this is the life cycle for a small star. In a minute, we'll look at the life cycle for a star, which is a much larger. So this is the life cycle for a small star. So right from the top, we'll go through it. Here we go. So we have the nebula. So in the nebula, there is dust, gas, and hydrogen. Well, obviously, the gas is going to be hydrogen. Then it starts to clump together due to gravity, and it starts to heat up. It becomes a spherical. There's not enough energy for fusion to take place or not enough energy for it to shine. So gravity is what clumps it all together. Eventually, it will then become a main sequence star. So this stage is called the main sequence stage. Uh, the star will spend most of its life here. The star is hot enough for nuclear fusion to occur, so fusion can occur. 
hydrogen is fused into helium. Obviously, there's high temperature and pressure for that to occur as well. The star is the most stable here. The reason why is because the force of gravity pulling it inwards is equal to the force of radiation pressure pushing outwards. So there's a nice balancing act there. Scrolling down, afterwards, it starts to run out of hydrogen. It then becomes, a, it swells to become a red giant. And obviously, it's run out of hydrogen. And then the star starts to fuse heavier elements such as helium. So we can fuse helium and helium together to make heavy elements such as carbon, oxygen and nitrogen. Then finally, when we run out of um, the lighter elements, so when we run out of lighter elements, what happens is the outer layer sheds off of the star and the core collapses on it, in on itself. So the core will collapse. Once the core collapses, what happens is it becomes a white dwarf, which is hot, dense and obviously it's a white. And then last of all, that will then cool down to become a black dwarf and fade and become cold. Yeah, so there's a lot to take in, but this is the life cycle of a small star. In the next video, I'm going to do the life cycle of a medium-sized star. Okay, so what about if we look at the life cycle of a massive star? The one we looked at before was for a small star, but what happens if we look at the life cycle for a massive star, one which is much larger? Well, the main thing is this. The majority of the life cycle remains the same. So the nebula, protostar, and the main sequence bit remains the same. So we're going to just do look over that one more time. All right, so for a massive star, the majority of the life cycle remains the same. So we still have, number one, the nebula phase. Here we go. So the nebula, then it becomes a protostar, and then finally it becomes a main sequence star. So those three bits remain the same. But what happens later changes. So it won't become a red giant, white dwarf, or black dwarf. It will go down the following path. Right, so the life cycle remains the same. So nebula, protostar, main sequence star. But then afterwards, it just goes down a dramatic route. So afterwards, it swells to become a red supergiant, very, very large star. Right, and it's inside the supergiant, which we can fuse heavier elements, such as, so it can fuse heavier elements up to iron. For example, magnesium, silicon, and sulfur. So it can fuse heavier elements up to iron in the red supergiant. Right, so after the red supergiant phase, what happens is, it, can't, it collapses very rapidly, and the compression causes a giant explosion in the form of a supernova, guys. So a supernova is formed here. And obviously, we're going to be fusing elements greater than iron. So it's in here because there's enough energy to fuse elements greater than iron. So actually, guys, you can get uranium made here. So uranium is made here. Yeah, so uranium is made there. And obviously, it's a giant explosion. It can outshine a galaxy for several weeks. So after the supernova, there are two possible stages, right? So after the supernova, it can become a neutron star, but if it, the star is really, really large, it can actually become a black hole. So the black hole has extremely high gravitational pull and not even light can escape it. So not even light can escape the black hole. So it can either become, once again, so after the supernova, it can either become a neutron star or a black hole. It can only become a black hole if it's large enough. So let's just put that if it's massive, yeah, if it's massive. So really, really heavy. Right, so let's just have a quick summary for the large star. So for the large star, right at the top, so we know it becomes a nebula, then the protostar, then the main sequence, just as before, then swells to a super red giant. We can fuse elements up to iron, and therefore magnesium, silicon, and sulfur are formed there. Then eventually explodes outwards in the form of a supernova, and the supernova can end up either becoming a neutron star, but if it's really, really large, it can become a black hole. That is the life cycle of a large star. So just a recap right from the top. For a small star, it was the following. Right to the top. So right top for the small star. Dust and gas and hydrogen brought together by gravity. Then it becomes a main sequence star. Then it runs out of fuel. It then swells to become the red giant. After it becomes a red giant, it sheds off the outer layer to believe a white dwarf, followed by it cooling down to become a black dwarf. Superb. So what about the life cycle of a massive star? It's roughly the same. We start off with a nebula, then it becomes a protostar. After the protostar, it then becomes a main sequence star. After the main sequence star, it then swells out to become a red supergiant. From the red supergiant, the compression is too rapid and what happens is it's, there's a violent giant explosion in the form of a supernova and from the supernova stage it can either become a neutron star or if it's large enough it can become a black hole. 
and that's it quite a lot of words here quite a lot of keywords here so my advice to you guys is to make a flow chart for this unit so make a flow chart detailing the life cycle of a star step by step what's going on easy marks in the exam guys all right i know it's a long time me talking but i hope you enjoyed it so i shall see you next time for more cool physics make sure you like and subscribe to my videos take care goodbye and good luck revising